Hi loves, if you're new here, welcome. If you're not new here, then you'll notice I've had my hair done. Tell Jesus the bitch is back. <laughs> Blondie is back. There used to be a running theme, like a running joke with me and my friend that whenever I was in a relationship, I would go dark brown hair. <laughs> And then whenever I was in my single era, I'd go blonde. So it was very, very surprising when at the start of the year, for the first time in ages, I went dark. My hair was so dark in January. I did the classic thing of going through a breakup, let's go and get your hair done. For me, it's, it's just like, it's a no-brainer. All like my major hair changes have been after a breakup. The fringe I had when I was 18 is probably the biggest shocker. I had a full fringe and I did that the day after I broke up with my first ever love and then we got back together a week later. <laughs> so I had this fringe and oh my god if you've had a fringe you know it's such a nightmare to grow out. It was a fringe then it was bangs, never again. But yeah, I think haircuts, if you're a girl, I don't know if guys feel the same, there's not that much you can do with your hair. But as a girl, having your hair done is like a big thing. I literally met up with my friend, this is months ago in Cardiff. He came to meet me and my other friend out. And he didn't know at the time that like everything that was going on with me. And then he said, I knew something was up though. When you put on your Insta, you'd add, it, add your hair done and it was a big difference. He's like, you can always tell with girls when they get their hair done. So anyway, yeah, I'm sure you can relate. I'm back. I just wasn't feeling like myself for a while. And you know, like when you go on um, like social, any social media, it comes up, doesn't it? Um, like on this day two years ago, on this day three years ago, and videos kept coming up of me, like old clips from the podcast. And I was like, I don't even look the same. I don't feel the same person. I'm probably not. Well, I'm obviously not. But I also don't look the same. And then I just put it down to my hair. So yeah, this is the outcome. I do love it. Not gonna lie, it hasn't made as big a difference to my personality as I was hoping. I was hoping to feel just exactly like myself again. And I still don't. So that was a little bit disappointing. But you know, the hair is the first step. I'm sure everything else will follow. Uh, but yeah, anyway, hope you've all had a good week. By the time this comes out, we'll be over the full moon. I don't know if you were TikTok or you were social media, less you know this, but the algorithm on mine, whether or not I want it, best believe I'm aware that there was a full moon. And apparently, it's a big deal for all of us. So, hope you've survived it, and I hope you're doing well. <laughs> also, please ignore this nail. My fingernail broke, I'm getting them done tomorrow. It's highly unfortunate that it's on my right hand and probably always in shot. But it is what it is. The show must go on. Can't be perfect all the time. Can't be solid 10, 10, 10, 10 all the time. Sometimes it's, you know, the universe has got to give you a break. And I wish I could say this was my only break this week. It wasn't. But, you know, here we go. Anyway, right, let me go into this week's story. A friend of mine died a few years ago from melanoma. He rang me the day he got his diagnosis and told me he had been given six weeks to live, but he was feeling okay. He only just made the six weeks. I find that so fascinating when people say that they're okay. I feel like you always see loads of stories like that. And not to be morbid, but I feel like I would be the same as well. Because I think when you're faced with it, it's really like a flight or fight mode, isn't it? Or do you say it the other way around, fight or flight, wherever? Where in your day-to-day -day life, it's very hard to get yourself out of like a depression or a bad mood or whatever because you just feel like you've got the time, I think, maybe subconsciously. Obviously, people have like mental conditions and stuff. I don't mean that. I just mean like if you're struggling, I think sometimes it's hard to pull yourself out of it because subconsciously you're like, well, I've got time. You know, I know things will get better. Whereas when you've literally been told you've got six weeks to live, I feel like not many people would want to spend those six weeks sad. So the best thing you can do is just accept it and say you're feeling okay. But it's such a crazy thing because it's such a devastating situation. But it's interesting that when you're put in those situations... You just go through I always say that though when I have the stories from you guys that are going through like such horrendous breakups and stuff you just you surprised what you can get through I think as a human okay anyway he was happily married to Carol and had been for 30 odd years the day Jean or Jenny 
don't know how to pronounce it. I'll say Jean. The day Jean phoned me to let me know he was terminal, he was at his father's house and hadn't told Carol yet. Only 15 minutes before, his older brother had phoned his father to let him know that he had brain cancer and had two months to live. Oh, dear God. Jean joked that it was a race between the two of them to get to the end first. He was a funny guy and was so well-liked, you can imagine. He came to work two days later to pack up his things and send his final farewell emails. It was his 56th birthday, so we decided to have a cake. He blew out the candles and one of the girls got a bit flustered and excited and asked him what he wanted for his birthday. He said, very short books. <laughs> oh my God, this reminds me. I don't think I've ever told this story, sorry if I have, but I used to work in Monsoon, right, a clothing shop years ago. It was my first ever job actually well I worked there and a pub and I think I got them about the same time but I think Monsoon was first and when I was 16 I was like a very shy girl and you know I hadn't explored much of the world <laughs> so going to Cardiff and dealing with all these people was a bit of a big deal so I'm not convinced that small talk was my strong point I mean it's not now to be fair but anyway I'm serving this customer it's Christmas time and she was Muslim so she was saying like um oh we don't celebrate Christmas but I'm getting this for my daughter because I like even though we don't celebrate it I like to still get her gifts and stuff so I was like oh yeah so lovely it was a dress rev I was wrapping it up for her and then I said something like oh well at least you can save money on Christmas presents like with the rest of your family as soon as it came out of my mouth I was like oh, why would you say that why can't you just like just agree with it. Why? It was like I was trying to find something bad to say about Christian celebrating Christmas. I think that's what I was trying to do. Like, oh, well, you know, if it was up to me, I wouldn't. Which is a lie, obviously. And it, it, bless her, she did, she, I hope that isn't offensive. She did, definitely didn't take offence. She probably thought, oh, the socially awkward girl. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. It's like one of those things. I mean, you just say something in the moment to try and like make the situation a little bit better or less awkward or, or just like generally positive, even though it wasn't negative anyway. I feel like that's the same type of thing. And those things are embarrassing sometimes. I've learned with age, not that well because I've got this podcast and I don't stop talking on it, but with age, I have learned that it's better to not always fill the silences. And I think there's like books around it. Like if you're a manager and stuff, you shouldn't fill a silence because people will fill them for you. And I think as a manager, it's a good thing to stay quiet. I'm sure I've read that in a book somewhere. Okay, anyway. A week before he died, he rang me from his bed to tell me that he was able to get an early payout from his superannuation and that he had paid the house off for his wife. He said he thought he would never live to see the day he only just made it. That's such a lovely thing to do. To show you what type of guy he was, on their 25th wedding anniversary, some years before, Jean and his wife Carol were travelling in Europe. He had organised a surprise renewal of their vows on the pretense they were just wandering around looking at historical sites. They dropped into a particular church in Venice, and when they walked in with his family, the priest was waiting, much to the surprise of Carol. It was the church his parents had been married in over 50 years before and Jean had organised this from Australia down to the T without her knowledge so they could renew their wedding vows. They had a great marriage. In terms of romantic gestures, not somebody has to do something that big. It just shows that I, I think like if you love somebody that much you will go to great lengths to plan things for them and make them feel super special and I think that's so nice. The most amazing thing he did for his wife was just before he died. He wrote a whole heap of post-it notes and hid them all around the house. He hid them in places that he knew she would not have the heart to shift, move or clean for some time, such as his hobby room, clothes, shed, etc. The notes said things such as, spend the money and enjoy yourself, sell my car, you don't need it, move on and I, w I will love you always. She is still finding them nine months after his death and they are now some of the most cherished things she has. That is the sweetest thing and so romantic. And also, can I just say, move on? Jean, you're a bigger man than I ever could be. 
<laughs> if I was passing away, I would not be leaving my partner, not saying move on. I don't think. Although then when you actually like deeper and you think about how much you should love your partner, that love should mean wanting them to be happy ultimately. So unconditional love, you should be willing for them to move on. But I, I'm not sure I could put my blessing in right in. That's, that's a step too far in my opinion. But what a lovely guy. The post-its is such a romantic thing to do with somebody. And really in the grand scheme of things, it's quite a small gesture, like leaving notes around the flat, like around the house. People could do that every day. And I know lots of people do, but like not everyone does. And I just feel like little things like that sometimes are even more special than the big things. I used to have an ex that I wouldn't call him a romantic, but he always used to spoil me. And sometimes it was, well, I mean, it was always great, don't get me wrong. He definitely used to spoil me. But I, I don't know if you'd always call that romantic. Like for me, romantic is like, it's a bit of both, obviously, a spoiling as well, but it's those types of things when it's little things to really go out of your way to show your partner that you love them and show them how they like to be loved. And I think that makes it extra romantic. And it's usually when you hear people in real love and in real relationships, usually, like, they say the most romantic things are, like, bringing me a tea in bed every morning or putting my pyjamas on the radiator when I have a bath so they warm for me when I come out. It's like those tiny little everyday things that show you're thinking about somebody. And I think that's what those post-its are. It's like the little notes that you know where she's going to find those. You know what she's going to be thinking. So you're like jabbing straight in there. And yeah, that's what I was going to say. With um, that ex, we had a big argument once. Again, sorry if I've said the story. It was my birthday and... I think we'd, no, it was my birthday and I was on WhatsApp in the morning and we were messaging, obviously messaged me happy birthday. And then I just like locked my phone right, I put my phone down and I went into the bathroom to have a wash. And then when I came out, I'd had some in, I think I've said the story, I had something like 30 missed calls, loads of texts because my WhatsApp still said I was online. So by the way, if you've got WhatsApp, unless you shut down the WhatsApp app, like off your phone, it will show you're online even when you're not. So if you've got any crazy partners out there that are watching that, then that's a trick. Click off it if you don't want to be seen on it. Anyway, he thought I was online and just ignoring him, which, I mean, why? I was literally just messaging you back. Also, you're my boyfriend. It's my birthday. Obviously, I'm going to want to speak to you. Like, why would I ignore you on my birthday morning? makes none of the sense anyway so we had a big argument and then I was going to Barcelona with the girls and then when I arrived in the hotel he had bought me flowers like this big bouquet of roses and a chocolate cake and it's like organized this big thing and a note to say like happy birthday and that he was sorry and that was such a lovely 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 thing to do and it was so nice but like would he have done it if he hadn't argued with me in the morning I don't think he would have. Like, that wasn't pre-planned. That was, oh, I felt so bad that I'd ruined your birthday morning, which he, he did ruin it, but then he's had to do that. And then that kind of takes, like, the romance away from it a little bit, you know? So, yeah, I think, I think lots of people have different definitions of romance. Mine is the perfect mix of the two. <laughs> it's the extravagant stuff and the big shows mixed in with the little nods to show you that they care and that's the perfect guy <laughs> get you a guy that can do two of those things and then never lose them another super romantic story i heard this week was this woman she'd bought a house and she was redecorating it so she'd stripped the wallpaper and as she was peeling it away she could see that somebody had painted a message underneath it and it said frankie I love you, Pat. And Frankie was the woman that this woman had bought the house off and she was 80 years old and she'd been married to Pat for like 45 years. 
And he had painted that when he was still alive. He'd passed away since. And she'd never seen the message. So he painted it wherever, wallpapered over it, and then must have just forgotten about it. And then all these years later, this new woman uncovered it. So she sent the picture to Frankie, and she said she's not going to paint over it. She's just going to wallpaper again so that the message will always be in the house. How sweet is that? That's so romantic. And do you know why that's also so romantic? Because he did it and never told her. Like, he did that purely for her, not for any of the show. Like, he did that purely for her. He wanted her to find that, and he didn't know when she would find it. Probably didn't know if she ever would, really. But he did that just in the hope that one day she would see it. And that's one of the romantic, one of the most romantic things you can do, I think. Guys, the most embarrassing thing happened to me this week. And I don't get embarrassed that easily, really. To the point where, like, if somebody said to me, you know, you always get those questions, what's the most embarrassing thing you've ever done? It would be a question I would really have to think about until now. I don't know why I'm so mortified by this, but I'm deeply, deeply disturbed by it. Five days on. I am getting over it slightly now, but basically, I was in work and I had an email from LinkedIn. I get them all the time, like just generic LinkedIn emails. And basically there was a job title, which is pretty much what I do. But I realized that I didn't include my full job title in my LinkedIn. So I've just got executive assistant. I haven't got like who I'm an executive assistant to, which is like really impressive forever. So I was like, oh, I should update that. No big deal. I updated it, literally just, it's just my job title. And I said, do you want to post this on your wall to your followers or wherever they call them on LinkedIn? I was like, no, obviously not. Click no. An hour passes. I get an email from a recruiter saying, congrats. I was like, interesting. Clicked on it. I don't know how LinkedIn works, but it's it didn't post it onto my page, so I couldn't delete it. It still, for some reason, let all of my connections know that I've had a promotion, which is a blatant, blatant lie. I had people commenting, congratulations. The recruiter who got me the job messaged me, congratulations. And I was like, hen, you got me this job. You know that this is just my job. People from my actual work liked it. I was like, oh my God. And I know it's not that big a deal and I shouldn't be that embarrassed over it, but like, I had just started my my mid-year review and then, which didn't go great, and then I came out and I'd... I announced to the corporate professional world that I'd had a promotion. I, it was just one of those times I just really wanted... You know when people say, like, they want the ground to swallow them up? I never really knew what that felt like until that day. Like, I literally felt uncomfortable in my own skin. Every time I was going on my phone, there was another notification, liking my lie and congratulating me. And I was like, oh, my God. It just... I felt like a bullshitter and I think that's why I'm so embarrassed I felt like one of those people that you know the type that has got like CEO founder of nothing like this is what my friend reminded me of she was like don't be embarrassed remember there's people out there that have CEO when they buy us and they don't do anything I'm like oh so true but that's what I reminded myself of like one of those people like my ex that I told who lied last week that was like yeah, I'm the man, retail manager of this, or regional manager, and he wasn't. That, that, that's what it reminded me of. Except it is my job, bro, so it's not a lie. Oh, but as soon as I saw the likes coming through, I was like, oh my God, I haven't had a promotion. <laughs> Please. <laughs> so, so embarrassed. But that was pre haircut, so I should leave that in the past. That was brunette, said. You know what's so funny? When I had my haircut done so I've been going to the same hairdresser for a few years now and he likes me lighter and every time I go in he's like don't go back dark this is your color this is your color this is your color and then when I went in in January I was like I want to go dark and I was like and that's it I want all the blonde out I'm, I'm going dark and he's like oh really are you sure like oh, I don't know about that I love this color why don't we do this like trying to talk me into different stuff and I said 
no I said honestly usually you know I always trust you but I was like I'm so so set I want to go dark and then he said what does your boyfriend think because I think he was open that I would say like oh, yeah nobody wants me to do it you know and he was trying to he was really trying to get me to not dye my hair dark basically he said if you told your boyfriend what do you think I said we've broken up and he went he literally went like that say no more and he just went <laughs> just went to get the colour say no more it was like as soon as I'd said my <laughs> like current dilemma he was like I got you if there's any time to make a decision like this now's the time and he did it which made me laugh so much right I've got a couple of bad date stories to end um so yeah I'm just gonna read them out I met a Tinder date at a fancy restaurant and the moment I sat down at the table and said hi, he just went absolutely not and stood up and walked off. No, I'm sorry, the trauma that I would get from that. I would like to think I would sit down on the table, order myself a glass of wine and just enjoy my night anyway. And there's a strong possibility I would do that. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. But I think even if I was able to do that, the trauma that I then feel like coming home, I, I would probably cry myself to sleep. <laughs> oh, what a wanker though. I would never, ever, ever do that to somebody. Like you can definitely cut the date short and, or, you know, just be honest or make a little joke like, oh, you look a bit different. We change your hair, you know, if it's like a catfish, catfish situation. But you don't just say absolutely not and walk off because you just don't know what effect your words can have on somebody, do you? It depends completely what mood I'd be in. Because there's another part of me that he'd be like he didn't get a slap. Or a drink tipped over him. Or that I wasn't chasing him out of the restaurant. Just depends. Just depends what week of the month you get me. <laughs> okay, another one. I was on a first date with this girl and she gets a text and says she has to leave. It's an emergency. I assume it's the classic, this isn't going well, fake the emergency to leave type of situation. But no, she was honest and said she just got an offer in from her roommate and roommate's boyfriend. Their regular three-way partner broke up with them and she was invited to be their new third. <laughs> Not an opportunity she could pass up. She leaves me with a bill for dinner Oh, no, come on. That's too far. You, you've got to at least leave half of your money wherever. Although, who has cash these days, to be fair? Who has cash these days? So, she leaves me with a bill for dinner, but insists she'll text me tomorrow. To her credit, she did text me the next day, but just no. I mean, you've got to applaud the honesty there. Because I'd rather you that than some lie, and then you're in your head thinking, what did I do? You might as well be like, right, you know what? First date with a stranger, continue with a stranger, or sleep with your roommate and your boyfriend, or you know you've got that bit of connection with already. You might have been thinking about it for a while. They might have been telling you about this three-way situation. You've probably seen the regular one come into your flat every week and thinking, oh my God, I could be her. That could be me. She's probably fuming every time she comes over. She's probably built all this up in her head. So yeah, when the text comes through, best believe you're going after it. Although three ways with your roommate and the boyfriend, very risky, I think, from the couple. Very risky. Because you're obviously into three ways, fine. No judgment. But when you're inviting like a stranger in, it's effort, isn't it, on both parts, especially on the stranger's part. So I can't imagine it's something that you just can do on a whim all the time so you probably have sex just the two of you a lot still but imagine three ways are your thing and then you've just had this amazing threesome with your flatmate or somebody that is literally next door and that was so amazing how do you ever fight the temptation to not have that every time and you just know there's going to be one time where you want to have sex, just you and your boyfriend, and he goes, oh, why don't we ask Dora in? And you're like, you dickhead, am I not enough for you? I wanted to just be asked to, are you going to be thinking of her now? 
no, I'm sorry. That's too risky for me. That is too risky. Then you're in the kitchen. You go to the bathroom. You come back out there in the kitchen together. She's in a tiny pyjama short. She's in a crop t-shirt. She's bending over again the Weetabix. She's making porridge. I, it's just a recipe for disaster. Pun not intended, but does work. Wow. That is bold. I'd be very keen to you how that works out in the long run because that's um it's essentially like having a threesome with your friend like with your your partner and your friend I know they're roommates but they must be like friendly as well I think it sounds very hot until it's not <laughs> until it's not I mean no issue for the roommate though if you don't care about the friendship then I think it's more damaging for the couple for sure wow well, guys, have you got any similar stories? <laughs> any stories? We've got love stories, bad dates, uh, bad threesome experiences. Then please do send them in to Sadie at lovehotluck.com or um, send me a DM. All the links are in the show notes. Actually, this week, for the first time in a year, some of them were a year old, I went into Apple Podcasts because like, I tend to focus more on Spotify. So if anyone responds there, they actually email me. So I always see them. But on Apple, I done. So I just like randomly went on there and I read like loads of, I say loads, there's probably like four, but you guys have like five star reviews, but really like long and nice comments. And it honestly absolutely made my day. It was so nice to read them, especially because like I said at the minute, I haven't really been feeling myself. And it's a very weird thing to say you don't feel like yourself because I'm like, what is myself? But yeah, I just haven't been feeling myself for a while and I can just tell. I don't know if you can, but I can just tell. I don't even want to go into it too much, but if you've if you've been through something similar where you just feel down or whatever, you you can probably understand that there's like it's just a weird thing. You're like, I'm not I'm not quite myself. Um so like reading those it was just like a little boost and kind of like, I don't know, almost like a little reminder. People do still enjoy it and like hearing stories and sharing them. So yeah, thank you for that. Please, yeah, let me know your thoughts always on the podcast because I do see them and yeah, it makes my day. Okay, well, thank you for listening and watching and I hope you all have an amazing week and I'll speak to you next Tuesday.